Hello friends, followers and channel members and welcome to a video that I know many of you have been waiting for and that is the exciting announcement of the release of the SimSmart A320 Neo performance calculator for use with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now if you're not already familiar with SimSmart, SimSmart is a PC program for now, soon to be also available on Android. It is a A320neo takeoff performance calculator which has been based upon the real world performance calculator created by Airbus called FlySmart. Now of course as flight simulator enthusiasts we like to make things as realistic as possible which is why SimSmart is almost identical to FlySmart in its appearance and the way it works. SimSmart has also been tested up against the real world FlySmart to ensure that the calculations that it gives you are accurate. Now of course we must stress from the onset that SimSmart is not ever to be used for real world use. It could never be 100% accurate without paying thousands of pounds to Airbus for their engine performance data. But you can be safe in the knowledge at knowing that SimSmart has been tested against the real thing and it is more than accurate enough for use within Microsoft Flight Simulator or any other A320 Neo Flight Simulator. In this video we're going to give you a tutorial on how SimSmart works and of course if you wish to visit the website where you can purchase the product the link is in the video description down below. So let's go ahead and introduce you to the program SimSmart. We're going to go through and perform a couple of calculations and then once we've done that I'm going to go and explain how SimSmart comes up with the information that it's presenting to you and all about what the actual V speeds and things like that mean for us as a pilot and why it's giving those particular values for the takeoff from the information that you've inputted. So here we are at Parma. Let's go ahead and put that in. There we go, Lima Echo Papa Alpha. And today we're going to get the Meta C, which runway would be uh, a departure runway. Of course, if you were online using VATSIM or something like that, uh, and you've obviously got your operational flight plan, you'll know which runway you're going to be departing on. So the wind is 330, so we're going to be departing then most likely on uh, 24 right. Although, as I'm just watching some of the traffic in the background, they're actually moving to 24 left. Let's go with uh, 24 left then for the time being. Instantly as we select runway 24 left you can see that we have 3000 meters uh, takeoff distance available. Now that is the full length of the runway takeoff distance available so that is assuming you're going to not be performing an intersection departure you're going to be performing a full length takeoff. A little bit more about intersection departures later on. So there we've got our weather. Runway condition is dry. The anti-ice, of course, that's up to you as the pilot to decide whether you're going to have anti-ice on or off. We can see there's a low cloud layer just uh, overhanging the airport at the moment. Uh, the outside air temperature is 16 degrees, so potentially you could depart with the anti-ice off. So let's pop that in for, uh, for now. And then the takeoff weight, obviously, you'd know your takeoff weight when you have your payload and your fuel loaded of course and then the dry operating weight of the aircraft itself let's just put a takeoff weight then there of 70 tons now the takeoff center of gravity can be selected as either forward or standard the takeoff center of gravity is considered forward when it is anything below 27 percent so we're going to leave that set to forward for uh, the moment. The takeoff thrust then, we're always going to try and do a flex takeoff because it reduces engine wear and noise. Config 1 and our packs are going to be off. So let's go ahead and run the calculation. So there we can see Config 1 flex is going to be 62. We've got V1, VR and V2. Thrust reduction and acceleration values, engine out, acceleration values, and of course, a green dot. We've then also got the maximum takeoff weight. Now, those of you who are eagle-eyed will know that the maximum takeoff weight for the Airbus A320neo is around 79 tons. So why is the maximum takeoff weight showing as being above this? This is something that the real world calculator also does. It just calculates a maximum takeoff weight. It is not the structural takeoff weight. The maximum 
maximum structural takeoff weight, of course, is around 79 tonnes. If it's a value above 79 tonnes, then you're not regulated by any regulated takeoff weight. If, however, this comes up as being below 79 tonnes, then you need to consider what your takeoff weight is. If your take maximum takeoff weight is being shown as below 79 tonnes and you've got a takeoff weight above that figure, then you either need to offload passengers or fuel. But we'll do an example of that a little bit later on. This normally always happens on shorter runways. Here in Parma, we've got a runway of 3,000 metres, so that's quite a nice long runway, so no need to worry about that. We've also got the engine out procedure here as well, telling us it's a standard engine out procedure. If something went bang after V1 and we lost an engine, then at 1600 feet we would make a left turn to the Mike Juliet Victor VOR and went into the hold and it's also got the inbound hold information there. This will come in really useful when the secondary flight plan is available as this is what we would load into our secondary flight plan so that if something did go wrong after departure, you could just activate the secondary flight plan and the autopilot would continue to fly this engine out procedure. So let's have a look at these V speeds then. We can see that V1 and VR are the same and V2 is only a couple of knots extra. Why is this? Well, you may be forgiven for thinking that this must not be right. Surely there must be a bigger difference between uh, those values. But the truth is that actually on a long runway, these values are the same. And this is all to do with something called a balanced field that you want for your takeoff. The idea, of course, is that you want to be able to use as much of the runway as possible before reaching your VR, your rotate speed. But what is important, of course, is that you still need enough tarmac after reaching V1 to be able to stop. So if you can accelerate slowly on a long runway like we have here, so you don't need as much engine thrust, you can accelerate slowly to reach that takeoff speed of VR showing as 146 here, but V1 is also the point of no return. Essentially what we're saying here is we've got a nice long runway, we can gently accelerate up to our rotate speed which is 146 and V1, our point of no return, is also 146. The two have been brought together. So let's have a look what happens if we change some of the parameters. So for instance, let's say that the anti-ice is going to be on because we've got these clouds overhanging the field and you think perhaps it's going to be safer to make sure that anti-ice is on because they're quite low down looking at them. Uh, so let's put on the anti-ice and see how that affects things. So instantly your flex temperature goes down. It doesn't affect the V-speeds of course, but the flex temp goes down and your maximum takeoff weight has also reduced ever so slightly. Let's now, however, try an airport with a much shorter runway and that is where you're going to start to see some real differences depending on what parameters you set. So let's just reset the form and you will need to reset the form whenever you're changing airports. So let's go and select an old favourite which of course is Gibraltar. Nice short runway. Let's get the meta for that runway. We can see currently 270 at 14 knots. So let's go ahead and select runway 27. So a nice, decent headwind straight down the line for our takeoff. Runway conditions dry, anti ice off. We'll pop in a takeoff weight then there of 70 and a forward CFG flex config one and off. Now this is quite heavy and it's quite short runway so there's a good chance that this isn't actually going to be allowed. Let's find out. So there we go in this configuration flex takeoff is unavailable. Try a different configuration or use toga. Okay well let's go for the absolute maximum that we can get which would be a toga takeoff and config three and see if that then allows us to depart with a takeoff weight of 70 tons. There it is, that's now all being computed. And you can see this is a much shorter runway so that the V-speeds are quite far apart. We've got V1 is 126, so that is the speed at which we've got enough tarmac left in front of us to actually stop. VR is 130 and V2 is 134. 
We've also got a maximum takeoff weight here shown at 75 tons. Now that is obviously below the maximum structural takeoff weight of the Airbus A320neo of around 79 tons. So if you had a takeoff weight entered here that is above this, then it should tell you that that is not permitted. And we can just try that out. Let's pop in 77 tons, which of course very heavy for Gibraltar and see what happens. There we go, takeoff weight is too heavy. So if we drop that down to 60 tons, well below that, and just run that calculation again, we can see the various V-speeds have changed to reflect this new takeoff weight. Now, let's try with a tailwind for our departure. So at the moment, we've got a nice 14 knot headwind on the departure. Let's try it with a tailwind and see what happens. The fact we've got a tailwind probably means our maximum takeoff weight is going to be even lower. Let's see what happens there. So there we go, the maximum takeoff weight has indeed dropped because we've got a tailwind. The V speeds have again also changed to reflect that. So that's nice to see we've also got the uh, headwinds and tailwind component taken into account now for the departure. We could of course try and get away with a config 2 and see if that works. We can get away with config 2. Could we do config 1 and toga as well? Would that be permitted? It is, but that maximum takeoff weight has dropped even uh, even more, departing with config 1. But you can see how tinkering with all the different parameters does affect quite a bit. And as you can see, look at the difference there between V1 and VR taken off with a config 1. Your V-speed V1 is much lower than your rotate speed. Okay, let's move to a different airfield now where we can have a look at some intersection departures. So back here in Parma then, let's go ahead and pop in the information from this operational flight plan for our departure here to Gatwick. We're going to depart from runway 24 right, we'll get the latest meta. Uh, runway condition is dry, anti-ice, we'll have that on because of that low cloud base. We'll also pop in the takeoff weight, we can see the takeoff weight is shown here as being 60, just over 61 tons. However, always check the actual takeoff weight which is shown in your init fuel prediction page. Uh, if I just jump into the aircraft, we should see that this is showing here as being 62.1. So let's go ahead and, uh, and pop that in just there then. 62.1. You can always be conservative, of course, and round that up to maybe the nearest half value, maybe 62 and a half tons. Take off CFG is forward. That is found in the fuel prediction page in the McDo as well, once you've entered everything in. And for information, your takeoff CFG is considered forward if the CFG is anything below 27%. If it's above 27%, it would be set to standard. Usually, standard is obviously the standard. It's normally above 27%. But if you're flying the fly-by-wire A32NX at the time that this video was made, uh, the way that all the weights have been set up is quite often it is below 27%. So you will most likely be finding yourself using forward for the time being. And it does have a very small effect on the takeoff performance calculations. Takeoff thrust flex then, config 1, let's hit calculate. Okay, so that's all the information that we need and we go ahead and we pop that into our performance page in the McDo. However then, let's have a look at intersection departures. We're departing on runway 24 right in this example. However, if we just bring up a map of Palmer Airport. I just come and find uh, come and find this. There we go. So we're parked over here. We're going to be departing on runway 24 right, which is of course this one just here. The full length of the runway is 3,270 meters, and SimSmart will also confirm this as it has its built-in database. There we go, 3,270 meters. That is what all these details are being calculated on, departing at full length. But let's say we wanted to take an intersection departure. So if we have a quick look, we've got the potential for November 1. If we find the takeoff distance available from November 1, which is found on the charts, 24 right taking off from November 1. Our actual distance taking off at November 1 is 2,750 meters. Well, we can also tell SimSmart that we want to use this value instead by entering it manually. 2750, let's go ahead and 
pop that in. So we're going to use instead 2750 and let's rerun the calculation again now with this new value. On doing that then we can see that all the different parameters have changed, different V speeds, new flex thrust and also the maximum takeoff weight. So intersection departures are of course allowed in SimSmart. Now on its initial release not every airport will have the thrust reduction acceleration values and the standard uh, engine out procedure shown. Uh, if that is the case let's just choose an airport that I know at the time of making this video doesn't have the uh, actual values input. If we go and select uh, Inverness Airport up in Scotland and let's just put a low takeoff weight here as well it's only 1887 meters this runway let's just pop in a very low uh, takeoff weight of 60 tons and for those airports that don't have all of that information included just yet you can see it will tell you engine out procedure is coming soon however we are updating these all of the time so all of the updates for those of you that have SimSmart will run automatically in the background whenever you launch SimSmart the update will download automatically without you have to do anything about it the thrust reduction and acceleration values shown here are set by you the user now different airlines use different values some airlines use 1,000 feet above the runway threshold and other airlines use 1,500 feet above the threshold. You may also have seen this if you fly in the fly-by-wire A32NX. You can set the value there as well to either 1,000 or 1,500 feet. This is done in the settings page and you can select this here. I've got it set to 1,000 just because the airline uh, who I replicate here in the simulator also use 1,000 feet but there is obviously the option there as I said for using 1,500 feet. If that is the case of course and you change that you would then obviously need to restart the uh, SimSmart app but then next time and I'll quickly do this we'll show how this works. And there after restarting you can see the thrust reduction acceleration value has increased. The settings page then is of course quite explanatory we can select either kilograms or pounds for our takeoff weights and values. We've already explained a little bit about the thrust reduction acceleration value We've also gone through the option to use either default full runway or manually enter in intersection departure runway lengths if needed. The final one is the Meta data. Now, Meta is also downloaded automatically in SimSmart, but there are occasions that for whatever reason certain servers are not working correctly. So if this is the case, you do have the option to enter this manually. Now, in the real takeoff performance calculator fly smart they don't have the ability to download it automatically pilots have to put in the meta manually so if you want ultra realism you should probably always leave this set to always enter manually if for some reasons there is a problem getting the automatic meta download for instance if we try Christchurch in New Zealand and then go ahead and get the meta there's an error at the moment telling us that there is a problem with automatic meta and you can enter the data manually so, and that just brings this up so you can enter in the live meta that you can get either online or through the uh, the simulator itself and this is just entered in the normal format so for instance if the wind is 320 degrees at 3 knots outside air temperature the uh, QNH then needs to be set and then we can enter in 1013 go ahead and select that runway condition dry anti eyes off and then it's just generally a normal uh, filling in of all the parameters and you can go ahead and once you've actually selected a runway then you can uh, go ahead and get your takeoff calculations and there we go so that's about it for this video. If you did have any questions, hopefully this video will have helped answer some of those. And of course, if you still do have any questions or need any support, then you can either drop a comment down below or you can access the dedicated Discord channel for SimSmart by checking out the link in the video description down below. SimSmart is available now to purchase and download at a cost of just £4.75. It is a one-off purchase price with no monthly fees. Check out the link to the SimSmart website in the video description down below for further information.
I really do hope you enjoy using SimSmart as it adds a extra level of realism for your Airbus A320 Neo flights. A huge thank you to the beta testers of the product and of course to the real Airbus A320 Neo pilots who have helped ensure SimSmart's accuracy for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.